Wagwan wagwan people them. So welcome to my channel or welcome back. Welcome to room 2703 Reacts. Um, so I've just finished watching episode 4 or chapter 4 of Bridging the Rift which I think is my favourite one so far. I mean I don't know what chapter 5 is going to is gonna yield but that was, I mean it's music. You can't get any better than that for me. Music, animation, with thought and precision, emotion, a wholesome motivation for doing what it is that you're doing. Um, I mean, they look like such a great bunch of people. Like, sorry, I've got something in my eye. <laughs> They've come together. Like, I, can't, I can only imagine, as stressful as it might have been, how amazing it would have been to be able to work on and create something for this thing that you created, which is just, like, excelled, massively excelled, where they thought it could go. They would have hoped it would have got to this surely but you know that I'm an I'm a newbie when it comes to Arcane and even I know the weight and the power of how amazing the show is so let's not waste no time let's not waste no time part five we gave it our best shot I'm trying to think what that could possibly be about like because each one prior has kind of made sense of what it is but we gave it our best shot so I'm guessing this is just the culmination of everything we put it all together we've done our best let's just see what happens now Let's see, so, I will give you the world if you prove you can take it. That was Madada's mum, wasn't it? Oh, wow. That is so sick. If it goes out, we will get death threats. Doesn't matter if we win every award in the world, we will inevitably piss someone off who really, 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 really loves whichever character yeah. is an arcane and they will want to murder us. Isn't that crazy that your fans can also be the worst and not just appreciate? Nothing's going to flop. Uh, let's have a look at that trailer for Riot Games' this upcoming animated series. So, this is like League of Legends Christmas right now? Yeah. Holy <gasps> If it's even like half as good as that trailer is. <laughs> These characters, what if you don't know anything about League of Legends? Would you still engage in this? Case in point, hello. Hopefully we succeeded in the biggest thing, which was making League of Legends fans proud of their investment into the IP. The fact that somebody can make an hour-long reaction video off of, like, the smallest teasers that we've made is impressive. Let's have a closer look at this bit of animation because they're doing doubling. They're taking the character model and copying it. Gun barrel here, gun barrel here, gun barrel here, which is a technique that's stolen directly from 2D animation. We dissected it, like, every frame. Like, it was spot on uh, most of the time. I mean, I don't think I'll be going into that level of detail. <laughs> story or a project that goes out and you don't like it, say that like, no, it has to be good because wow. it's the thing that our audience cares about so much. What is that? So much. So it's, you know, it's not easy to make decisions. Am I just really dumb? Should I know what that is? for this project, oh. which I actually always thought was a detriment, but I was recently told that that was actually something they were looking for. So. Refreshing, right? <laughs> Not old habits, fresh eyes. They put so much detail and so much thought into the animation, you really yeah. don't match it, you know? Like, you want it to be just as detailed, just as nuanced, and um, sound as cool as it looks. So all the cool design, the weapons, the sound is what I think really connects for a lot of people. Like they may not realize it. Same thing with like music. Music is kind of like a universal language. There's something about that, you know, sonic thing that gets in your ear that really, I think, so right. brings stuff to life. Like when I go see a scary movie, I, I cover my ears, man. I don't, I don't cover my eyes. It's right? true. Like I kind of do both. <laughs> the goal is clarity in the end. You know, it's supposed to be like not noticed in a way. You know, if it's noticed, maybe it's done, you know, it's done wrong because it's like scenes are believable when people believe that they're in them. Um, Sorry, my watch went off. 
totally ruined your soundbite, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Redo! We should have had shirts sound. that said Sound Bros. Arcane Sound Bros. I'm with stupid. <laughs> yeah. We, we make the noises. <laughs> we make the noise and <laughs> I'm a big plant guy, but obviously everything would die oh, yeah. in this room. Artificial. So I had to find the best. They look good, man. Plants. Target. <laughs> Target's got some great fake plants. Little plug. Oh, uh, this these are uh motion picture MPSC awards. These were for uh Blade Runner and uh a game Resident Evil. And hopefully there'll be a third one there when you come back and film us for season two or something. <laughs> They're so deserving of Sound everything. Design, when you're working in animation, you're working completely from, from scratch for everything. And then a lot of times it's easy to just kind of do the bare minimum uh, of what's needed for the scene because that's just sort of the aesthetic. Um, but for this, from day one, it was let's create a really, really authentic sounding production track. Wow. Brad and I going down, my speak going down my speakers. Everything's been thought of. In our second episode, there was this council scene, and that scene just did not work for me. And the animatics and everything. And, and, and I looked at the script page, and I was like, no, this is, these are the right words. Like we're, we're saying the right things. The animation looked great. And I was like, what is the problem? The materials were far more dangerous than I was aware of. Sounds like how it was recorded in were against Academy uh, regulations. the VO booth. What I did endangered people. It was reckless. But to sell the sheer mass of this room, you know, you add reverb. It was revolutionary. Revolutionary how? All I see is a boy meddling with things he doesn't understand. Instant. The second there was that like feeling of the, the, the words yeah. expanding into this eerie space. It felt like every word was so much more, you know? And that was the first time that scene really worked for me. Those little differences, those little changes. <laughs> backgrounds. You know, backgrounds are... You know, what A little bit of reverb. <laughs> uh, what's happening around them, what could be happening around them. We try to go out almost every, at least once a week or on the weekends. I'm, co I'm constantly recording. My parents have this kind of four by five. When I pitched down the recordings I did, I got this, the engine had this kind of repetitive. And I was like, that's basically the industrial zone. You know, the steam releases, a cool little air compressor bursts pitched down. That is so clever, man. <laughs> and then the Foley is really that next layer, right? Creating this whole level of realism. Each one of these tracks is, you know, somebody watching this scene and doing all the, the feet for that one character. Going back, doing the feet for that next character. Footsteps, props, which is kind of like, this is a prop when you set it on the table and it has a sound. And then gear, which is like, you know, Vi has a certain jacket on with a buckle. Uh, that buckle makes a sound. You can kind of get a different feeling on each person. Um, Brad and I come from a world of creating game assets and characters in game where Foley is a huge player in games. So, you know, our viewpoint on Foley is like, we need it and play it loud. I loved that scene. <laughs> the Foley on its own, it doesn't do what you need it to do, but like just the sound effects by itself. Uh, it doesn't have that realism and the texture that you need from like something that's that's real. So together. Mm. There was a lot of organic recordings and thought that went into sounds that came from the natural world.
kind of pick up everything that sounds cool. <laughs> but I took that and sampled it out. 50 cal bullet. How about cassettes? The biggest thing was the <laughs> magic of the Hex Core, and this is like the beginning and the origin of magic of League of Legends. You know, I took some time and recorded some wine glasses. So this is pitched up and then thrown through a tremolator. And then it's also thrown through a Doppler. Wow. Uh, Rad messing with a bunch of different synthesizers and like, like a chimey tonal thing with uh, a choir. Kind of has both sounds intertwined into it. I like the whole shimmer thing. The biggest player in this game. So clever. That's your voice. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if that's just how we talk? <laughs> uh, so just. <laughs> <laughs> Recording a ton of that stuff um, just kind of gave us this like weird palette of stuff to play with. You know, running it through uh, an impulse response. Wow. Like a liquid kind of bubbly component to it. But... The one thing about Brad and I is we. That's just so clever. Taking those building blocks and building on top of that and building more and more on top of that and going six or seven steps beyond your first step, all of a sudden you've got something really cool. And then putting on your sound editor cap, it's like taking all that cool stuff that you made, putting it up against picture and making really hard decisions about what to, what to keep. What to get up. The way is the way. Do you still listen to stuff on those swords, Hit? Look at me talking like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Any sound designer can create amazing sounds, um, but to create clarity and to tell the story that the director is trying to put together, you have to be able to to pivot a lot. Yeah. Getting that sizzle on stuff. A nice little trick that I do is this. This is basically just a volume graph. But what I like to do sometimes, instead of tremulating the sound, I'll draw it in like this, uh, which I do a lot on creature vocals and stuff. But basically, gives you this. <coughs> It just blows me away. Like, yeah, me and you both. Hey, we need a sound for Savika's plasma blade, you know? And he's like, hold my beer. I work actually well under stress, except for when you have so many stressful things that you, that you feel like you lose. Oversight? Does that make yeah, it makes sense. sense. You know, there definitely are those moments where you just feels like it just is too much. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's why the burnout rate for I think showrunners is like a hundred percent. Everybody, all the time, all time, ever been. Knowing that right now, the thing that keeps me up at night is trying to make sure that uh, the next season doesn't disappoint. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? There's some other option, right? It's that like, is the thing. Or, you know, like, accept some things being imperfect, you know, or something like that. That's kind of like the other path, right? That would be the way that they could go back to humanity. The big hope, I guess, with this trip to Fortiche is to lock down the final episodes of season two. The end that I won't talk about very much uh, is, is one that is complex. This wow. part, I think, is just a particularly hard part of stories. Getting from your middle to the, okay, on track, final run on the Death Star, you know, that kind of that kind of location. Yeah, it's gotta be hard. I'm circling the exact location of the problem, because when you say, uh, this is a little uh, blurry, or uh, there is a bug here, sometimes it's difficult to just spot the right place and the right That makes place. sense. As you can see, we can't see the, the shard behind the glass, but the glass is transparent, so we have to see it. Um, it's a problem. Wow, I mean, imagine being that much. I would have missed that. 
hundred percent. Looks fine. Send it out. I don't know. <laughs> Fortiche and Arnaud and Pascal. I really, really, really trust them. Their heart's in the right place, you know, like you just know that they're always gonna err on the side of quality and passion. Ah, if the world is full of more people like that, err on the side of quality and caution. Et c'est ça qui est des fois un petit peu frustrant pour nous parce qu'on est assez perfectionniste et c'est de se dire bon allez là on, on lâche, on lâche ouais. le clavier. Des fois c'est un peu dur. Ouais. ouais. The last shot of the last episode. You locked the picture. And it's not so totally locked. <laughs> There's still time. Near, near <laughs> I write that kind of perfectionism now. It's a little bit crazy, but. People always say, oh, when you work on something, you leave a piece of yourself. In this case, it's just like, it, it, it definitely took a chunk out of me. I mean, imagine, like, it's so much to it. It must have done. The thing that I could somehow do and hopefully add some value is make stuff where we ask relevant questions and where we can show people different perspectives. Mm -hmm. I am the monster you and for Jinx, the central question is, can you ever forgive a monster? How far are you willing to go for your sibling? Is there a line where you just can't go for your sibling and you just have to say sorry, but this is where I have to leave you? I'm asking that question in my videos, like... I don't know for me personally. Uh, just know. saying. If there's anything that we can achieve with Arcane past just the sheer entertainment, if there's just some good questions to ask for all of us and find our own answers, man, that's... I think the best thing our king could do. Bit of a head scratcher, leave me some stuff to contemplate. Product in the history of the world to launch everywhere, including China, at the same time. And wow. we got Netflix and Amazon to actually partner because we're live streaming it on Twitch and enabling our players to restream it like crazy shit you'd only do at Riot ever that no one's ever done before. That's quite cool to get such big houses to partner. That looks so awesome. It is such a pleasure to welcome Alex Yee and Christian Link to the premiere stage. How many things have you spent six years on one project for in your life? One, one single thing <laughs> have you spent six years for before? Marriage? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pretty crazy to realize that the day's finally come. You know, we've been working on this for a long time. And uh, it's finally here. We certainly didn't expect anything on this caliber for the release of it, so it's very cool. Putting on this suit jacket. Okay, I'm not putting on trousers though. Let's where I draw the line. If I was somebody who was actually there, I would hate being followed by a robot. That being said, <laughs> as the robot, I have no problems with putting somebody into it. Vaguely uncomfortable. I'm loving this. Is, they have to talk to an iPad that is on a stick. I saw you on YouTube. Wait, you actually know who the f I am? I Yo! I know you! It's you! I'm a huge fan of your stuff. Yeah, the, the responsibility of this is kind of scary because I mean, look, it's like the anticipation from the fans, uh, just, you can feel it. It's like tangible, even on the internet, you can just feel it. My agent sent me out for it, and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know, a black kid, he's a scientist, he's super sick, you know. And then when I got in, I was like, oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot cooler than most, I gotta say. Okay. Oh, she's fine. The production value, this is like so incredible. Well, how do you approach this challenge? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh. the universal themes of hating someone you love and loving someone you hate is just very relatable. <laughs> Doing something like this, you never really know sort of what your what the end result is going to look like. But the team behind this is absolutely 
unbelievable. And since from day one, I knew that I wanted to be involved. I just can't wait to see what the players and what fans think of the show. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Like, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Anyone tonight across the world can turn on Netflix and watch it. That makes me really happy. <laughs> it's a weird feeling. He kind of looks like Victor. Be very special, yeah. I think I'm a little bit. Too afraid to really see what the reactions are. I think I think I'm just gonna watch it, and then I'm just not gonna look online for as long as I can before, like six years into this. You know, Gosh. The idea of having just someone go. Ah. This is like. Uh, I think it would be brutal. All I can safely assume is that the league audience is gonna be unmerciful. <laughs> Which, whichever way yeah. that goes, you know, if they love it, they will probably send me baskets of food. Uh, if they hate it, they will send me baskets of shit. It's quite the fan base. <laughs> Oh, the star, yeah. Grits. Did they watch all of it? Or just like the first episode or what? I bawled. <laughs> I like straight, like ugly cried. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think about it. So many people work so hard trying to do justice to people's expectations and they're doing it because of this love you know, and sense of responsibility to not let players down. It just makes us incredibly proud to see you know, the reactions and see those things actually happening. We'll show them. We will show them all. I get emotional watching it, like... All the people that helped make it happen, like, hundreds of people worked on it to bring it together. Not to mention the thousands of writers that built the IP that we were then able to translate into this. So, the feeling that we really wanted people to have is that we handled that IP with care and love. Yeah. This is clear. I'm going on the assumption that... Everyone hates the show and we're cancelled and this is the last night of joy we're going to have in our lives. <laughs> Act 1, review, Act Netflix, one. dude, what's up about man? Well... My expectations were like, it's going to be good. But after the finale, what a fool I was. It was so brilliant. Today we're taking a look at the new Netflix show, Arcane, and I want to just start by saying, it slaps. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, wow, that's lit. I've seen them. Aww. I don't know, I'm so overwhelmed. Mainly gratitude. I'm so proud of what this team, like the, the excellence so exceeded my expectations and I just, I know very well how ridiculous this climb was. Merci à Christian hein, pour uh, la confiance, the trust, you know, the trust of Christian in Fortiche. At the very beginning oh, I'm so of happy for them. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, everybody. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui étaient investis dessus et je pense que ce qui a fait aussi la oh. qualité d'Arkane, c'est c'est que tout le monde était très passionné, a toujours été très très motivé quoi. Je pense qu'il y avait cette idée un peu de, de se dépasser, de ne pas rester sur ses acquis et de, de, de prendre des risques quelque part. Et je pense que ça, c'était payant, hein, aussi. 
I was at dinner recently with the directors of Fartiche, and they said they're very happy right now because when they got into this industry, they really wanted to create something to be history of the animation world. And they were smiling and they were saying, it's such a relief that after six years now, they feel like they know they worked on something that is part of animation history. It doesn't matter if the project is like a wild success or it's doing fine or, or you know, worse than that. If anything, we've crafted something that pushes the animation world forward by a significant margin. 100%. Ah, oh, I'm so happy for them. Nice getting above it all, huh? The fact that we can spend um. five hours in just Piltover and Zon, and then do it again in a second season before we start to zoom out of this one little corner of the world and this handful of characters, just the possibility space is so wild. It's a small miracle that this TV show got made, and it's a it's a smaller miracle that so many god-tier artists came together to work on one project and you, you can't not be proud of what they did. Yeah. So, yeah. I think people are going to be really excited about what they find. Oh, we like a bit of that. We like a bit the of that. The reason why I joined Riot is because I like playing the game. I loved it. I think when Alex and I were starting to talk about making something like Arcane, we just thought that this should exist because we want to watch it. We love these characters. We love these worlds. I think maybe my favorite thing above all of Arcane is that I am very confident in saying that there's many people who work on Arcane right now that feel like they're working on the most important thing of their lives, like their careers. And that to me is probably the most important thing. You're giving people purpose, man. That's that's no mean feat, do you know what I mean? I didn't think I was gonna get emotional watching that show, like but you've you've just you've just seen so much of it. Um I genuinely can't get over how much that was just amazing. <laughs> like I'm trying to I'm, I'm I'm just gonna make sure that I try and speak and not end up getting myself emotional as well because I think when you stop and you deep the show itself, the the the, the actual storyline of the show is already emotionally triggering like when you talk about episode three and the end of that and what happened and stuff like i still remember my reaction and just being like what and i remember it so vividly because like my i was so in shock and like my mum had just happened to come upstairs and um, and she was like what's the matter with you are you all right <laughs> and i was just like i talk um and that level of emotion that's like a show can convey i mean i'm an emotional person anyway right so i mean I, like i cry a, a lot of stuff but that was such an eye-opening moment to me that they would take main characters that you just started to really love them because they you know there was there was a there was a rich building of their characters even though realistically they hadn't necessarily been with them that long um and to see them been taken up it was just like wow so the story itself is already quite a emotionally triggering one but then when you then lay that on with what it took for them to make this how long it took for them to make this how many people involved for them to make this you just can't help but feel elated when you see results like that and how nervous they were how like they almost convinced themselves that it was going to be terrible and people were going to hate them and send them baskets of doo-doo do you know what i mean like because you know and that's and that's the other thing like you know we obviously i don't know i don't know the league world this is something that is all completely new to me that i'm learning right now but i can compare it to like the beehive when it comes to beyonce for example and like how you got you got fans who, you know, they they love you, they love you one minute when things are, are made to their expectation, but 
will absolutely come for your neck when it's not in. And I've never really understood that. Like, I never forget, like, when um, when Pink first came out, she was very much, like, you know, R&B and, and whatever. And then the second album came out, it really wasn't that. Um, and obviously, I was a lot younger then. And I was just very much just like, where's, where's R&B Pink done? Like, what's this? What's going on? Um, whereas now that I'm older, I'm so much more willing to appreciate people's art for what it is that they've decided to make. Because there is, there's usually a reason that there's, um, again, there's a motivation, and you can find it. Be I think the only thing that I just can't really get on board with is death metal. That's the only thing that I'm like, I just can't. My, my ears just aren't tuned to that. It's just not my thing. But anything else, really, I can find some beauty in it. Do you know what I mean? Like so, I th the fact that they've never made a show like this before for the characters that people were playing for, for me, it's like, surely it's gonna be good I, I, another example is he-man um which i have seen the first series um or the first half i didn't really finish the second half so i do need to watch that i probably need to watch the all of the all of it again to get the full story but i remember how many people came for the i can't remember his name but the guy that made it um and you know people were like i just remember twitter being full and then like like review bombing the, the the show and stuff and it's just like how can people like again obviously have your opinions you know what i mean like because like i'm i'm doing that exact thing right now i'm recording my opinion but there's always a way to be respectful of the hard work that someone's put into something and i think looking at this and the behind the scenes like this you'll be really hard pushed to be not you can be a critic of course you can do it. I mean, if you don't like something you don't like something but like you can at least respect the effort that it's taken people to put into producing something like this and it isn't slapdash it, they've thought about everything even the sound effects like the actual sound effects and how granular the detail is on that like it's blown my mind it really has blown my mind that was such a brilliant series and i'm so 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 glad i've watched it i'm so excited for season two i am so excited for season two she said that like you know we're going to be expecting some great things so i can't wait so uh so yeah Absolutely fantastic, really good show. Um, again, it was Babette that kind of tipped me to this, but then there's been other people that have been speaking to me in the comments as well, so thank you. And I think I've got a couple of episodes, a, a couple of episodes, I've got, I've got a couple of um, songs to watch on the back of this as well, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, massive love and respect to all the people at Raya, all the people at Fortiche, um, all the, all the, every, everybody that was involved in, in creating this piece of history, this animation piece of history, like you should all be so proud of yourself. And I, for one, am such a fan, such a fan, such a huge fan now. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so if you enjoyed that, thank you for watching. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. <laughs>